Hello everyone. I hope uh, all of you are keeping fine. Keep yourself well and healthy and use your time to catch up with our course on understanding cinema. Today I am attempting to make an online lecture on the topic called film language. This topic I intend to cover in two parts. The issues which are going to be covered in this topic include the meaning of film language, the science and syntax of film language, the physiology of perception, reading the image, denotative and connotative meaning, paradigmatic and syndigmatic connotation. The part two is centered around the concept called syntax that would cover the concepts of codes in semiotic, the concept of misanse that consists of set design, lighting, costumes, composition and staging and acting. It also includes sound, it also includes montage. Though some of the concepts we have touched earlier, this is to be understood in the context of reading a film, understanding a film using the title called film language. Well, there are uh, materials I have posted in the Google Classroom. Please read them. And this lecture is broadly based on the writings in the book called How to Read a Film by James Monaco. The book is easily available, including our library. Please read the text and supplement my lecture to understand it well. Why do we need to understand film from the perspective of film language. Is there something called film language really? Or are we trying to impose the idea of film language? Does film language exist? If film language exists, is it similar to languages like Assamese, Hindi, Tamil or English? Or there are similarities and differences. Well, first of all, we cannot carry on a conversation using a film language. Like I do now with you in English. I can't use a film language to convey messages. Having said that, there are similarities between language in general or language, a spoken language, written language which are basically made up of signs and codes having a syntax to convey meaning. Basically they are all systems of meaning making, communication so therefore, we can say film language may not be a language like Assamese or English, but it could be considered as a quasi language that has a lot of similarities to spoken and written language. One must definitely know the language before starting to speak and understand. If I have to learn to speak in English, I have to start with ABC. Similarly, any other language, I have to know the words and grammar. But it's not necessary when we watch film. 
nobody learns a language of film to watch a film they say even dogs and cats enjoy visuals they watch attentively to some of the program even infants as old as 6 month attentively watch some visuals mothers leave the kids in front of tv to engage in some other activities especially when advertisements are played they watch very keenly so therefore it is not necessary to know film language in order to understand any visual medium in fact every human being who are sighted can identify recognize and read images but everyone reads image in different way some gather more information some gather less information so there is a possibility of becoming visually literate in order to gain more information from the same images though kids watch tv but they say it's only by age of 8 or 10 they try to understand comprehend in full meaning of the films or any other uh, text this like kids might start speaking at age of 1 or 2 but when they make complete sentences and meaning and communicate it's about ages 5 to 6 so there is a certain common certain amount of fluency in understanding or using the language be it the spoken written language or film language if we say one can become a literate in visual reading then how do we read an image well in order to understand how do we read an image we need to look at the physiology of perception the eyes look at an image using the optical sensors then send the stimuli to the brain so the interpretation and perception is a mental process while the visual stimuli is a optical uh, process we may compare optical process with the auditory process the sound comes to a ear whatever sound which exist in the ambience all reach our ears we do not choose to hear anything it all comes whereas it's somewhat different when it comes to seeing we choose to see something because in order to see something clearly see something sharply we need to focus the fovea in the retina gathers the stimuli therefore it has to focus in order to understand what it is therefore this is an understanding about the physiology of perception physiology physiology of perception includes both the mental process and the physiological process i said that we consciously choose to see and read images but however all the process is not purely conscious there is both semi conscious and conscious process involved in reading images 
when we read a text we read from left to right so we focus and move our eyes to read every word and go on like that but when we read images we also do something similar but not necessarily in the order of left to right this semi conscious process of reading images is called saccade reading it takes about 1 20th of a second to read an image uh, where i scan different points of an image and perceives what it is so this is called saccadical reading which you can uh, see it in the uh, slide we have a image of a greek statue and they mapped how our eyes move from different points and perceives this image though eyes move saccadically in a random order of point to point but it is not purely random they move on some directions present in the images those directions are points maybe the lines maybe the shapes maybe which directs to read the most important points quickly therefore the point we are trying to make is every individual can read images however some can read more information some read less information given the same timing so when we look at how do individuals read images we see there are three different mechanisms involved in reading image first the physiological second ethnographical third is psychological physiological process i already mentioned that is the combination of optical process and mental process involved in perceiving an object or perceiving an image what is ethnographical reading ethnographical reading is our cultural training in reading visuals and combining meaning of it once they conducted an experiment by giving a drawing of three dimensional shapes to two different cultural background one was the westerners the other was the african uh, students they were given some sticks and thread to create recreate the shape of the drawing shown on the board what they ended up making was while the western culture made shapes of three dimensional figures whereas the african culture made a two dimensional shapes of the sticks which we can see here in this slide so therefore the cultural background the training the experiences also influences the way we see and interpret images thirdly the psychological reading of images psychology is about individual differences that make up of individual experiences and individual emotional responses which are different for different individuals so therefore images are integrated and associated with their own experiences relating to their past history past uh, life therefore the combined reading is all this three put together creates the meaning and uh, the information they gather uh, 
you know to the different levels of uh, perception some can read an individual uh, sorry some can read an image more sophisticatedly than the others therefore they say people who are visually literate see more and hear more therefore some people can read images far more elaborately and in more detail than others well coming back to the topic how to read a film the word read implies we can read image like we read text this has been an endeavor for long time to break the overall structure into finer units and see how the meanings are embedded in the units like they used to do in spoken language linguistics for example tries to break down the language into finest unit from sentences to phrases to word to morphemes to alphabet if you do that in film we might also end up with equations like we might consider a film like an essay then a sequence in the film will be like a paragraph then a scene will be like a sentence and a shot will be like a word and a frame will be like an alphabet in language spoken language alphabet is the smallest unit many of them do not have meaning by itself equation of a alphabet in cinema to a frame contains lots of meaning in fact they say it can contain infinite number of meaning therefore similar attempt to read film by breaking down the units will not yield much headway into understanding how we read the film scholars used semiotic theory especially in 1950s and 60s after semiotics became an important science to understand the meaning of communication that happens mostly by the user how they generate meaning rather than meaning embedded in the text itself so this approach gave a new impetus to understanding film in a better way a film scholar called christian metz elaborates this theory in detail on film semiotics of course uh, most of us are familiar with the concept of semiotics that was discussed in earlier uh, semester it was initially introduced by ferdinand de sasur when he was studying linguistics and how we located language ferdinand de sasur located linguistics within the theory of semiotics or within the broader framework of structuralism where he found the language system as a structure and the usage which comes out of it as to find its meaning based on the 
the structural norm. Use the concepts like Lang and Parul to distinguish between the system of the structure and the usage pattern. So this theory was very influential, adopted into various other philosophy gradually, is applied also to understand many of the communication system. We consider everything as a language system because they are all made up of signs and symbols and codes. So basically semiotics is the study of signs, signage system. So Christian Metz has written on the film language or the semiotics of cinema. He says, we know that film language exists not because film language exists therefore people have great people have told great stories rather it is true that films have told great stories therefore film language exists i don't know i'm making sense so what he's saying is we know that Film language exists not because it can tell great stories. Rather, we know film language exists because it has told great stories. In fact, film has told more than stories. In its last hundred plus years, it has captivated people's imagination so powerfully across culture, across ages, across different periods. Film is definitely an art too. It's a creative work. Therefore, there are a lot of meanings embedded in its, its texts. So only when we know how to read it, we can unravel different layers of meaning buried in every frame. Therefore, how do we relate the literary literature reading and film reading using the concept of semiotics? When we say language is consists of signs and signs are reference to objects and the objects and the signs do not have any permanent relationship. The relationship is totally arbitrary. So therefore the relationship of the sign and the object exists in our mind, not outside of our mind. In order to understand it better, we can distinguish between signifier and the signified. That is, a sign can be broken into signifier and signified. If I use the word tree, the imagination of tree is there in our mind. The sound tree or the letters T-R-E-E do not have any intrinsic quality of a tree themselves. And the imagination of tree for all of us are so different. And there is nothing called the tree. There are different types of tree. Therefore, literature is rich because the signified and signifier are different. And therefore, the reader has this fascinating experience of going through the relation between the signifier and signified as he unravels the meaning in the literature, in poem or novel or short story or essay or anything. Whereas in cinema, the signifier and the signifier are identical. Therefore, the challenge of creating imaginary 
signified for the filmmaker is is really high so they say it is like a short circuit sign a sign which resembles the referent itself that's why christian metz has used this term a film is difficult to explain because it is easy to understand to give an example in literature or in spoken language we might use a word rose the flower but while speaking about rose it can be used as rosy rosier rosiest even in a similar sounding words like rose or rise or arose so therefore minor differences in accent can bring out whole lot of signifieds whereas in cinema the rose has to be a rose it cannot be anything else if the director wants to show a rose he has to show only a rose he cannot show a rosier rose or rosiest rose so therefore the imagination in cinema is different from literature they say the power of spoken or written language lies in the difference between the signifier and the signified whereas the power of film is that there is no difference between the signified and signifier so we have been talking about how a sign in a image visual image can be read mentally by using the concept of signifier and signified while signifier is all those visuals we see on the screen also the sound the text and the symbols that might appear on the screen and the signified that exists in our mind that would be read like i said earlier physiologically psychologically or ethnographically roland barth talking about semiotic approach in reading image or any other text uses the term denotative and connotative meaning of the text or image so film meaning derives by the denotative meaning that is literal meaning and connotative meaning the suggestive meaning the connotative meaning could be further classified into paradigmatic and syndigmatic readings what is denotative reading of the sign or image denotative refers to literal or actual or obvious meaning of the sign or the word it refers to objects which we experience in real world so when we look at people or spaces we connected to or related to our experience of reality therefore when for example a woman is to be said in true image it can show not the abstract woman but an actual woman similarly any other object for that matter while connotative 
reading we associate the images with our experiences we go beyond the literal meaning to figurative meaning the associated meaning of our experiences the associations can be positive or negative to give an example home is an image a house is an image it can be positive when a person associates with it in terms of security in terms of comfort on the other hand a person might also relate it to the negative emotional experience like fear or discomfort if he or she has that emotional past experiences it is in connotative meaning that cinema can tell rich stories because it can bring several types of associations which we can relate to our real life however the directors filmmakers do not want every individual viewing the film to have their own experiences but rather they direct the viewer to go through a particular viewpoint as much as possible the viewpoint the director wishes to portray in the words of uh, roland barth denotative meaning can be first order of signification while connotative meaning is second order of signification in the film denotation therefore is what is shown on the screen connotative meaning is the suggestive meaning that are culturally encoded for reading denotative meaning the audience do not need to make an effort whereas for connotative meaning it evokes several meaning where our visual literary skill would help us unravel the associated meaning which is built into the visual narrative there would be emotional overtones emotional or psychological or cultural interpretations ideological assumptions social values many suggested and implied meanings are brought out in the connotative meaning connotative meanings are further broken into paradigmatic readings and syntactic readings what is paradigmatic connotation a short can be taken as a paradig- paradigmatic reading whereas a combination of shorts can be taken as syntactic reading we have used the term misanse alia which means arrangement of all the things on the stage putting all the things into the frame so in order to understand paradigmatic reading we need to take one frame one shot at a time and see how our mind reads interprets the meaning for example the concept of rose i mentioned earlier in literature in film while in literature when a author mentions a rose every reader would imagine a rose 
of his or her choice the audience might the reader might imagine a rose which can be fully bloomed or a bud or a rose with leaves with a stem it could be different colors it could be in different seasons timings of the day whereas when a director wants to show a rose he has to show a particular rose however the director too can exercise his or her discretion in choosing how to shoot that rose he or she can shoot it in different angles in different length it can be low angle or high angle or eye level angle it can be close up or it can be a medium shot or it can be a long shot so when a director chooses to shoot any one of a particular shot the all other options which he or she leaves out acts like a paradigmatic connotation if a director shoots a rose in a low angle it could imply the rose is dominant it is shown as the flower the image like that we can go on reading the particular shot in comparison with the all other possible shots or the infinite number of choices the director could have used paradigmatic therefore implies the possible alternatives that can fit into that particular syntactical arrangement order of arrangement of language any language for that matter so in the short scene here in the slide we have the frame from the film shole where the heroine is shown from the eye angle of the antagonist antagonist point of view where he is seen as the dominant whereas the heroine is seen as totally helpless the same shot could have been taken differently high level or low angle where the meanings would be different paradigmatic meaning therefore is choice of particular sign from all other alternative choices i'd given you earlier in some class the examples of say food if i am having breakfast so i might start with say puri chapati or dosa or whatever it would be followed by say chutney or sambar or some sabji while the choices for the first one is either puri chapati or bread or dosa whatever the choices for the second one is within the available alternatives so you cannot replace the first one with the second one and have the two of same type like instead of having puri chapati you only have sabji and chutney sambar and have it for breakfast it's not possible i might also have given you this example of 
clothing as a paradigmatic example you know like a man would wear pant and shirt the pant can be replaced by pajamas or shorts or suits the shirt can be replaced with kurta or t-shirt or pullover but you can't have similar type for both the options right so a paradigmatic is choices made out of the possible alternatives so when a particular choice is made mentally we are able to connect with what are the other alternatives the director has left out so our reading is related to alternatives that are possibly not chosen coming to the syntactical reading of the sign or image syntactic reading is combination of short while paradigmatic reading is understanding of the misanse which we will discuss in detail later syntactic reading is how short a b c is arranged and when in arrangement what is the different meaning they evoke because of that sequential order of arrangement or the theory which explains the syntactic syntagmatic short is montage theory which we'll also see in detail in the part 2 of this lecture the russian formalists are known for their montage theory sergey eisenstein is particularly known for this this kind of experiment in all of his films in film strike he arranges a shot a where the laborers workers are killed by machine guns in shot b the shot shows butchers slaughtering animals the combined two shots have the dialectic effect it is juxtaposed with one another to create an effect that laborers are butchered like animals so this is in literary reading how a sentence is arranged a sentence would have a noun a verb a subject in order to create a full meaning similarly arrangement of different shots can have a meaning and changing one with the other can have total new effect we will be discussing about this later uh, as i said on uh, explanation of uh, syntactical uh, meaning now to give you some uh, concepts given by peter woolen in his book signs and meaning in cinema he cites cs peers the american semiologist who is known for interpreting more of visual signs compared to sasur's linguistic uh, signs peter willen talks about three types of signs they are icon index and symbol icon in other words is a sign which is identical peter willen talks about three types of signs basing on is sorry basing on cs peers semiology the three types of signs are iconic indexical and symbol 
icon is nothing but sign that is identical to the object it refers to while in spoken language all the words we use are signs that are arbitrary in nature they do not have any resemblance to the reference they make a cat does not have any reference resemblance to the word cat only english users know what cat means uh, whereas the cat do not have any permanent connection with the word cat whereas when we show an image of a cat in film in visual the cat looks like the actual cat therefore the sign is called icon for example in the image here of vidya balan in the film kahani the moment we see this image most of us can make out this is a popular film actress vidya balan and she is a woman however when we locate it in the film her costume or the backdrop do not identify her as the actor herself whereas the character she plays because she seems to be carrying a child a woman who needs lot of uh, support who can't uh, you know do extreme physical activities somewhat vulnerable and the background shows there's a taxi which is typically those seen in calcutta so we are able to locate a woman there a woman who is expecting in a city so therefore this is iconic in the sense a woman we know it's a vidya balan but however we look at her as the character in the story to to give more examples so we see another example here taken from a kashi film called onanta where a boy and a girl is seated in the image what we read is simply a boy and a girl seated and they come from particular culture and probably they are seated on the top something that's why the background is sky clouds rather than any other landscape and probably we'll come back to reading this image later whether uh, in fact all this different types of signs are not exclusive a sign which may be iconic can also be indexical can also be a symbol so here when we see it independently we see it as an icon of two individuals one a man and another woman seated next to each other probably atop something another example is about a girl she is gazing at something and wearing a particular type of hat hat could be identified as jappi so all this images have resemblance to what we see in re real life therefore they are not real in cinema but however we relate to the real in real life therefore th they act as sign not for themselves but sign in the film narrative 
Therefore, we read them as icon that resembles the objects they refer to. The next type of sign is index. Index have meaning in association to emotional or psychological or ideological or any other connotation they can create. For example, here the image is index of shame because we see a woman lying down on a face, on a pillow. A man's hand is shown throwing some cash, a bundle of cash is there and her face is not happy. She is probably experiencing a sense of shame. So this is a frame from Ingmar Bergman's film Shame where a woman who sells her body receives cash and she feels a sense of shame. So the cash there is indexical to her feeling of shame here. So the index can be of two types. One is technical index, another is metaphorical index. Technical index, for example, we can see clock to show time is running or calendar falling. A metaphorical index, for example, here is where the sense of shame is connected to the money. Her, uh, her body being sold for money. This is another frame from the film Parasite where we see the couple seated at their home and carrying out their daily chorus. What we notice is here is their house is located lower than the, the average ground level. Probably the index skill to their lower social status is connotated by this frame. So therefore metaphorically their lower status is identified by also their house is situated at the lower level than the ground level. Another example of index is this frame from Kurosawa's film called Ikru. An old man, the protagonist, is seen seated on a swing and is swinging in a park. It's probably it's raining. This is not normal for a 60 plus year 60 something man seated in a park and swinging alone whereas this is a metaphor of a man being born again the child in him comes alive so the child index is transferred to this man on a swing the other type of signs are symbols that are used culturally here an example from the hindi film hum apke hain kon the woman is shown wearing a sari covering her head and carrying a ritualistic plate with all the puja materials which is understood in a particular cultural symbols, so religious rituals. The married woman covering her head and wearing a Sindhu. <coughs> Sorry. They are all symbolic. Another frame from the film PK, where the protagonist is carrying similarly puja material. 
to a religious place though it is shown as uh, humorously here he is carrying the puja material to a, to a Christian church uh, but it is understood in particular cultural symbolic meaning another example of the symbolic is again the coffin in the Swedish film face to face coffin symbolizes after death the concept of death itself the meaning of life so uh, again it is cultural it's a philosophical and the meaning of man woman after death inside the coffin so several layers of meaning are brought in by using this uh, symbolisms within the index we can also uh, see the metaphorical in terms of their analogy or simile used so there are uh, several types of figures of speech used in images like we use in literary writings metaphor metonymy synecdoche true or something we will quickly touch a metonymy is a figure of speech in which an associated meaning is brought in here we have a frame from the film roshaman akira kurosawa film roshaman where the bandit in the jungle comes across this royal couple a woman on a horse is led by her husband the bandit suddenly noticing a beautiful young woman he gets bad ideas that is shown in metonymy the association of his sword being lifted up as a perverse attempt to assault her it's shown as a phallic symbol it is shown as a weapon for aggression violence so an associated is associated meaning is brought by the image here is called metonymy another example of metonymy is from this film called leda by charles sabrol french new york director here the actor is seeing his reflection on a mirror which is cracked in several layers so what we see is a multiple image of himself on the mirror which is a metonymy of his association of his real schizophrenic stage he is facing a crisis of multiple personality in, in himself so that is being you know used figuratively in the image here another type of figure of figure of speech is called synecdoche where a part is shown to associate it with the whole or whole is shown to associate it with a part here the frame from the film la chinus by godard where the eng people there influenced by communist ideologies moist ideologies rebel so here the lady is shown holding a gun and ready to salt she is covered shielded herself with the books red books so the books 
is shown as a part of the entire ideology they uphold and want to protect and want to fight for is that's how synecdoche is brought in as a figure of speech in in movie so another example is from this film called triumph of the will the visual here shows the soldiers on a march past we only see their uniform movement where the hands are marching here the part of the marching soldier represent the entire defense force of nazi germany the entire army of his force there a part is associated with the whole so for example sometime wheel is shown to associated with the entire meaning of technology the motion the transport the communication so where uh, figures of speech work powerfully to bring in several layers of meaning another figure of speech is trope here which means literally means turn of phrase so what a sign represented suddenly creates a new kind of meaning the signified is change from the signif earlier signified of a signifier so here in modern times charlie chaplin goes to relieve himself in the bathroom in the industry so he tries to smoke there and there his boss appears on a cctv and ask him hey where are you spending more time in the bathroom so bathroom is a private space for being relaxed there which is cut off from your public space is now rephrased as somewhere you would be surveilled even within the bathroom you know this another example of how a bathroom be a place of relaxation where people can refresh themselves and relieve themselves and you know you be yourself there is been transferred as a place of horror in the film psycho here so true therefore works like a metaphor that changes is signified from the earlier signified so that's how we come to the end of the part 1 of the film language hope you have understood the basic concepts and how to read images using the semiotic theories so we'll get back with another lecture on how to understand the film how to read a film using the syntax concept thank you